Uh, I believe Mr. McDougall will be joining us um, via the phone, but we do have a presentation submitted uh, that was submitted in advance that we will get up on the screen. Uh, yeah, so thank you for the opportunity. Um, so I do have the PowerPoint, which makes it easy to um, reference what I'm saying. The, the three points I want to talk about, uh, I think, are all important. Um, so we'll move to the first slide, uh, second slide, sorry, about the um, hospital crisis. And this is, um, these are just some things that I think, I don't know, personally, I think there's a low level of awareness of the seriousness of the situation. Uh, I'm not even sure how many board members would know about these three things. Um, I think one thing I think of when I think of the, the one on the far right about the, um, what the staff are experiencing in hospitals, it's just getting worse and worse. And the, the stress, I think of people going every day to work and it's like that, the conditions are worsening as some people leave, there's no respite. Uh, and I think a lot of staff think they aren't being heard. Um, so there is starting a movement. You can see the picture of the protest. Um, I think also just to, um, to wonder about what can public health do with the, with the situation um, in terms of the hospitals being overwhelmed, the healthcare system being overwhelmed, uh, and COVID getting worse. Like the there's a real risk that the people's immune systems are becoming less reliable because they've had infections. Um, more and more people are developing long COVID, which is um, seriously disabling. So it's kind of like a, a slow moving crisis. It's getting worse and we can see that it's getting worse and hopefully we can do something about that. Um, the next slide, please. Um, so this is after the last meeting uh, where these are a few, a few um, reports in the, la in the month afterwards. Uh, and I wanna highlight there were two reports where Ottawa Public Health Dr. Etches were saying that they would support local businesses and organizations that bring mask mandates. Um, despite Ottawa Health not doing it themselves. Um, and then also looking to get, delegate mass mandates to the province. So then we go to the next slide. And sorry, just before we go on, if you see in the top right, uh, at the end of the segment, it says Toronto's Medical Officer of Health has been directed by that city's Board of Health to urgently explore reinstating mass mandates. So that was the day after the Ottawa Public Health meeting. The Toronto Board of Health said mass mandates are important whereas Ottawa Public Health uh, took a different direction, the board members. So the next slide uh, is what Dr. Etches sent to the school board when they were considering doing a mask mandate. And this uh, second sentence there, the science table recommendation, was what at least two of the trustees pointed to as the reason they voted against the mask mandate. Um, so if we go to the next slide, um, I have the questions where what, what does it mean when Ottawa Public Health is publicly stating they will support mass mandates and organizations in the community, but then they go to an organization and say mass mandates are not recommended. And then there's like a, you know what happened with all the people disrupting that meeting and it ended in a tie and they don't have a mass mandate now. So, I mean, I think that needs to be addressed. Um, the other questions, I think if you're saying that it's only up to the province, is there any science saying that a city level mandate doesn't work? Um, and also, are you assessing how well the, um, the recommendations are doing at voluntary masking? Um, so then to the next slide, um, the motion that was passed at the last Board of Health meeting was asking the province to do better public education. So I thought this was something I could uh, let you know about is that I've started in the last month um, this crowdsourced database. And um, I think it's, it's a tool that it could be, it has a lot of potential. And um, the like, it summarizes what it is there in the slide. Um, if you go to the next page, next slide. Um, so it's got on the right-hand side, it says the four different sections. Um, so this is a way that people can contribute the information they know what's going on and other people can find out what's going on. Um, and I think it could be a powerful tool. So I wanted to let you know about it. I think a lot of people, like I said, don't have that much awareness about what's going on. So I think if you have this collection of information that people can access in different ways, uh, it could do a lot. And that's why I'm presenting it. And if you go to the last slide, it's just an example of one of those four tables and the kind of contents that's there. So I, I leave this to you to use as you wish. 
uh, I think the the it depends on how people use it, how effective it is. So thank you. Um, happy holidays and solstice. And I do sorry, I know it's five minutes, but I just want to say that I know the board is recruiting. So um, I hope you can uh, promote that well um, to see um, so people know what's going. Like people can contrib contribute um, because I think civic literacy is a big thing too, and um, so hopefully that is an opportunity to promote more civic literacy and engagement. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. McDougall. We're right on time. Um, do we have any questions from board members? Seeing none, uh, did you want to offer a comment, Dr. Edges? Uh, thank you, Mr. McDougall. Um, maybe just to clarify.